This is your City Council Roundup, a recap of what's happening at City Hall with John Ongaro. The views expressed in this program are solely of those of the host and not necessarily those of the radio station or its partners. Well, away we go on uh, this special edition, Danny, of the mm-hmm. uh, City Council Roundup. Look who's here, Mayor Ken Boschkoff. Good morning. Fine, sir. Yes, it is a good morning, Hi, Ken. gentlemen. Yeah, thanks for coming. You were here for the three-minute sunrise this morning. You got to enjoy <laughs> that with Danny. It's his favorite part of the day. I, I, you can never get tired of a Thunder Bay sunset. No, no. sunrise. No, you sure Any yes, sunset. Sir. Good call. Yeah. Um, <laughs> appreci- got you both ways. I appreciate you being here today. It is a um, the day after the State of the City Address that you delivered last night at City Council. Uh, the City Council meeting, there were a couple of things that happened last night, but we're going to focus a little bit today on you and that message from last night, uh, which I found to be exceptionally positive, and I think that was your intent last night. Well, all all year since uh, being elected, uh, Thunder Bay is like almost every other city in the world facing the twin dragons of opioids and homelessness. Yeah. So... When you're when you're starting with problems as time immemorially as that, it makes uh, makes the other tasks um, seem somewhat diminished, but they're still there. So uh, we still have the same issues that face us every day: uh, roads and taxes, mm-hmm. uh, safety for our our kids, playgrounds, accessibility, all of those. So. Uh, Trying to encompass that in the message to the public, the overall message I want to leave with people is we're doing very well compared to many other communities, not just in Ontario and Canada, but in the world, really. When you, when you look at the big picture, we are. And um, we do happen to see often time to time the news of the things that are going on in our community that is frightening to some and concerning to some. But it is not just a Thunder Bay issue, so I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, but going forward from those things, there is still an awful lot to do. Last night you talked um, at length about how we are set up with an opportunity in the next uh, number of years uh, to really see some growth that we've never seen here before if we're willing to accept it. Uh, truly, because people seem to think that the mining bonanza will fall into our hands, Mm -hmm. but it it will not. We have to court companies. Uh, Companies are coming here. I'm not going to say tire kicking because they they have several issues of transportation, air connectivity, where they're going to put their kids in school, all those kinds of uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. So until we can really have a consolidated uh, picture for people to grasp immediately why we are the best right and uh, you know our, our one of our cards of course is the port but there's several other ports on lake superior that would would sell that so we have to keep upping our ante in terms right. of affor- affordable housing mm. uh, uh, education for kids that type of thing right i do have something to the sure. mining question the mining boom as it's being called or this interest in mining for our region, our area, has been discussed for years. Is there a definite timeline? Is there an answer to this? Or is it just ongoing? It's happening. What is this mining boom that's predicted? What is the timeline? The mining boom is in largely in, in special metals or precious metals, uh, uh, the lithium, all these yeah. things. But we're, we're not the only place that has lithium in the world. It, it's a you know, from the volcanic era, uh, all sorts of uh, other combinations yeah. of uh, metals and metallurgical uh, products have emerged. So our selling point has got to be that we have easy access and that you can live here, raise your kids, uh, and and on the commercial side, get your product out of here, whether it's by rail That's- or vessel, easily efficiently safely it's our biggest selling point we have a couple of options here we are we are blessed with being able to present options to the mining companies long term is the city set up to receive the wealth of that could be coming from 
this mining boom that we may see. Are we in a position, we said this, I said this to you off the air, and so I'll, I'll say it to you again. If you go and add 5, 10, 15,000 people to our population in the next decade, is this city set up with infrastructure to accept them and to make sure that we're going to be fine? I, at, at this point, we are not. So I think that it's probable that we'd been leaving uh, much of the development to the private sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as a professional planner, it's, you know, we, we have lands set aside, but they're not serviced. So the, the speed with which we can accelerate that access to housing... Uh, which is also, of course, being provided by our neighboring municipalities. Yeah, sure is. You go up and down Lake, Lake Superior Shore, uh, Shunya is doing extremely well with uh, houses well, well over half a mil. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oliver Papoonj, I don't view our surrounding municipalities as competition. No, absolutely I view not. them as allies mm-hmm. in this. So, And I think that attitude has been uh, refreshingly received by the other mayors and councils. You've uh, you've done a radio trick just then. It's called a segue. And so you went from uh, are we set up for this and do you think we're ready for this to the answer being no, I don't think so. We have a lot of work to do. Let's talk about council and let's talk about the work that you do have to do because you have a group of people right now that are pretty much holding the fate of where we go with whether it be infrastructure or planning in their hands. You have a $30 million infrastructure gap that we can't seem to close. We have dragged our feet on a bunch of things over the last decade or so, of which many members of this council have been part of that. We can't seem to get ahead in that infrastructure gap. And at the same time, I, uh, I, I'm, get, I'm probably in the same boat as you and others on administration. I'm getting tired of people saying, well, we got to fix the roads first. We're working on it. We're doing our best. But in the big picture... When you look long term, we've spent some money on things we didn't need to. And now we're in a position where taxes are going up and we are on this bubble of growth that we need to start spending money on things that we need and not necessarily shining things, shining new things. Do you agree? Uh, 100 percent or 93 percent. OK, I'll take that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, there are some of the shiny things that uh, embellish life and make us attractive. But in terms of focusing on what we have to do, uh, not necessarily regrettably, but undeniably, you, you, have to, you have to make sure the water's running yep. and the sewage is flowing and uh, being processed. And, right. And so uh, those are the basics that make, uh, not necessarily to the home buyer, but to the person who wants to set up an uh, an operation of uh, manufacturing, and of course, manufacturing isn't you know the the t- towers spewing right uh, pollutants uh, uh, like it used to be. It's it's a different form of of uh, industrialization. So, uh, nonetheless, it does exist out there, and there's there's no compelling reason why in the center of the country, this close to the American border, uh, that we couldn't prevail. So. Right. Um, I think that uh, in terms of economic development, uh, we're, we are offering the right product and we are getting our message out, at, which I saw at the mining show the other day uh, in Toronto. Uh, we were just running from uh, uh, producer to producer to uh, introduce ourselves in the Thunder Bay Economic Development Team about uh, what we have and and uh, why they should make their decision. And people are in a decision-making mode. It's a checklist business. For sure, for sure. So they're going from city to city. And uh, as ever since the Pied Piper, uh, people check out communities and and they'll, they'll move them uh, quickly if they don't get what they want. So... The world has never changed that way. You have an exceptional team at the CEDC that does this with you. And I actually got the newsletter yesterday. Their monthly newsletter is fantastic. If you don't have it, go and sign up for it. I think they are well-led, and I think they are are doing a great job of representing us. However, they can only do so much because the buck stops with you and 12 other people in city council chambers. Are we in a position in that chamber to start making decisions about preparing for these things and maybe move away from decisions that 
are not as important right now. Because to me, from what you're saying today and what you said last night, our focus should be on this growth that is sitting at our doorstep. Uh, I would have to say that there's a lot of deflections and there you go. and taking us off message. Okay. And to me, uh, there comes a time in a, in a community's life where we have got to refocus on the economic development as opposed to people coming up with items of new business at the end of a council meeting. It takes an hour and a half on petunias. Or yeah, something. absolutely. <laughs> and, and we see a lot of that. All right. So now, um, and I, I warned you of this because I've been thinking about chatting with you for a couple of days now and there's a couple of things that we need to address here first of all this is a very expensive year ahead of us victoria Vilda is coming down the ripping up of red river road which i fully support i think is going to be a great great opportunity there all of these things are very expensive and we've planned to pay for these kinds of things and we have a budget in which to do so one of the things that is not on the budget that is coming up to council this month that i've asked uh, other councillors this i'm going to ask you the mayor about this the indoor turf facility is coming back in front of council this month. You have now a decision to make of whether or not this project goes forward. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I am not against an idea of doing something for the 5,000 soccer, play, soccer players in town. That is not the issue. The issue for me is $50 million. We said at the beginning we wouldn't spend the money, that kind of money on it. We came back with a new idea. We scrapped chapels and started all over again. And now we're pushing 40 something million again. Is this the time, with all that you've said and with the potential that's in front of us, is this the time we should be doing this project or should we put it on the shelf? No, this is the time for the project. I'm, I'm appalled at the cost, but we have environmental accessibility and other considerations. For sure. Building anything these days is horrendous. However, uh, people who are moving here with families, their first question is soccer. When I'm out there, uh, the kids of all ages come up to me and going, my dad said to ask you, why do we have to keep on playing on a cement surface type mm. of thing? And uh, uh, to me, soccer is the game of now because it's affordable. It, it allows all types of kids from uh, the, the smallest infants to uh, senior, senior, seniors uh, to be able to play with the ball. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, we're either going to keep on playing on cement, ho old hockey rinks that, uh, that aren't being utilized because hockey sticks cost more than a week's wages for many parents, uh, that uh, uh, no, soccer's the game. we got to go forward. With I, I, I agree with you. But this is the council, though, that three years ago said yes to this project at Chapels that ended up being $50 million. We put the brakes on it. We came back and there was a resolution to make the cap $38 million. We're already over that. Do you think that we need to spend that kind of money on 5% of the population that's going to be playing this? Or do you think we can invest in other things that it's going to help our growth more? No, I, I, I will reaffirm that uh, soccer is the game of today. Uh, it's, we, we have to follow the ball, essentially, is that... Uh, my mother could never have afforded to equip right. me for hockey. Right. Uh, not even the sticks these yeah. days. So, uh, or the touring. So we have to make things. Uh, it's a, an expensive component, but we have to. We have to provide for soccer. And we have to do it right. And uh, do you think we're doing it right right now? No, I think we're way over the top. Okay. Good, because we thought that about chapels, too. And now chapels, that entire plan that we spent about a million and a half dollars putting together is now in a garbage can, and now we're doing it again. And this is where I, the only thing that I push back on, Ken, is that we just keep spending this money to figure things out, and then nothing happens. And then we spent more money now to figure out this new site mm -hmm. that just came out of the blue, that wasn't part of the plan five years ago, and now we're spending a bunch of money on it again. But we're still not there. It's still in a very expensive building. Uh, it is, and it, it would be one of the first things that I would consider using the strong mayor's power to direct. Mm. Excellent. That's interesting. Because you have a $60 million-plus police headquarters coming in front of you in the next two years. 
Uh, there are no bargain buildings coming up in the. Forest. There are no bargain <laughs> buildings. Nothing cheap. You're not building. You're not building any little structures. And and you know, five thousand municipalities in Canada. There aren't very many that are escaping the. That's right. The infrastructure. That's right. Gap. Uh, the infrastructure fix. Uh, the adaptation to uh, climate and and. And I'm and I'm not saying disabilities, but w- disability f- things should have been built into buildings years ago. We well, went, the fact we, that we presented this new facility without accessibility in it was was mind boggling to me. I it's twenty twenty four. I, 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 I don't I understand. I cannot believe it. that we accepted anything from any architectural firm would submit. That's right. Without doing it, following the guidelines. It's, it's, it's pretty provincial, simple. Federal. Mm. So you're you, so what you're saying? I, I think we're saying I, the same I, thing. It's a building that we need, but what you're saying is is that you're still in the position that it is way too expensive right now. I am, and I to me, uh, this is what you know when a, a parent or guardian takes uh, a, a younger person to go play soccer. They don't go, oh, beautiful, isn't that beautiful a building, beautiful structure. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, fifty five. No, they go get your, get your runners on and get out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, um, that's fair. So, okay, L- last thing because Danny's going to kick us both out of here. He's got a show to run. Uh, sorry, Danny. I do have a but question now. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Well, no, this is kind of the tail end question. Go ahead. You, so, yours. so here we are. Uh, let's put the uh, let's put the uh, turf facility aside. Uh, let's talk about opportunities here at the waterfront. Currently, the city is asking for the public's. Uh, opinion on what should be done next here at the waterfront i have said a million times and i get hate mail for it all the time and my friends make fun of me i am fully supportive of everything that is spent down here i think this is the gem of the city and the money that we spent years ago on the waterfront was exceptionally well spent and all you have to do like me and you've come to visit we spend our lives down here for six months and to see the thousands of people every week that come down here to enjoy it is worth the money now we're in a position for the next phase one of those phases is pool six Uh, The infrastructure that's at Pool 6 for the cruise ships that are coming. Um, We spent some money on that. We got some help with that. Now we're looking at expanding the waterfront uh, and making it even better. Again, it's one of those long-term shiny things uh, that is on the the radar for you. Uh, What are your thoughts telling you about the development down here and it's more specifically the development of Pool 6? Well, the catchers meant where the, the cruise ships are coming in has to be upgraded so it's the first thing you see sure uh, now it is the first thing you see when you get off the boat and there's not much to see there right. so i completely agree <laughs> with that but the, the captains love the way we've set up the dock there with the bumpers that's right it's beautiful it's super it's, impressed they're yep. very so, impressed so yeah. and right then you off get the off bat. onto a gr- gravel path well but <laughs> the gravel is now turning green it will be green you yes know, this, this year. year that's right so it the uh, the visual of coming into an industrial site will be uh, dampened shall we say progress and uh, and a lot of the work in the downtown north side uh, is quite tourist friendly for walkability yep uh, not necessarily for people who want to park a car that's right uh, heaven forbid thunder bay has to park more than two blocks away from something well, they uh, <laughs> it's a thunder, it's a thunder bay is, about oh that. it's a thunder bayism <laughs> and if you're not parked outside the door there's no parking <laughs> So, uh, but th- that those improvements have been made, and and also on the south side, uh, you know, they have a, a, a keen group of people, absolutely, know, who um, are are well intentioned and have got good plans and stuff too. So I see. Uh, first of all, let's to answer your question directly, the cruise ship people, uh, we were so blessed to live with. Sibley and all the parks oh, around the waterfront mm-hmm. and and the shore. So we are already destination numero uno, and sure. the captains love it here. So the fact is, uh, they're going to keep coming uh, as we improve the the welcome mitt, if yep. you will. Uh, that will that will only enhance tour directors and people who are selling the package, and the comments that appear to sell it to the next generation next mm-hmm. year's you think it's sustainable the cruise ships very much so mm-hmm. the world isn't making any more lake superiors no you're right and the scenery remains uh you know this 
Thunder Bay is only a tiny dot on the shoreline here. It's a very big lake. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you it's very uh -huh. big. It could almost be like the world's largest freshwater lake. Well, it's huh. an, an inland That's sea, uh, if you will. Yeah. It's yeah, uh, sure. it's kind of a big deal. This I, I hope for success there. I just I also hope that we're able to sustain it. And I think with some of the changes that are happening down here and in the downtown wards, both of them, especially with the change in the south end without Victoriaville and the opportunity there. Uh, is a good thing. Listen, we're we're almost like out of time. Seconds here. Um, I I just want to thank you for doing this because you don't have to. I know you have a million other things to do, uh, but if we can, let's uh, let's check in again in a couple of months and do this again because I think that there's so many things in front of you coming that I think that there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to need to discuss as a community going forward. There's some busy times ahead. Well, uh, the springtime, you know, the, the, everybody's kind of poised at the at the start gate now yeah. to get going. And, uh, you know, the dissipation of the, the winter, the ice and snow is gone rather yeah. quickly. So, uh, yes, I'll be ready, and I, I should have uh, more to report. And I I'm, I'm just want to thank uh, our civic administration and the people of the city who are still rallying in all sorts of groups sure. and organization yep. uh, to, to uh, grow our city and to make it stronger, healthier, and safer. Danny, final Let's, word to you. Yeah, well, mine is kind of a, a way out there question, and, and you know, I don't know if this is how we're going to end it, but I do want to ask. And I okay, <laughs> I've got I got one minute Saturn. left. I wanted to just get your thoughts on this. It has nothing to do with the community of Thunder Bay, our city. But Cochrane, Ontario, about 700 kilometers away, mm. selling land for $10 to attract residents and, of course, businesses. The mayor is pushing for this. They had over 3,000 calls to the city, and they have 1,500 lots available for a cost of 10 bucks. Is that something that you would ever consider to attract business, or do you think that is too, too good to be true? It's a great question. It is a great question. I think uh, most of our land is owned by somebody okay. and not necessarily the city. Um, for us, it's, it's getting the servicing and, and getting the builders to be able to do it. I think that the demand for us now is at an almost uh, completely insatiable uh, level. Okay. So uh, the skilled trades uh, mm. are doing very well and our ability to service, those are our constraints. So a price of the lot doesn't seem to be in the top four and a half. There you go. Because mm -hmm. you still right. need a sewer and you still need water, yeah. you still need a road to get to it. And as long as we can offer uh, the world's safest water supply and, mm -hmm. and, the, and dependability, uh, that's a selling point that, as mayor, uh, makes my job a little bit easier. If All only right. we can get through that pesky infrastructure gap. <laughs> $30 million. It's yeah. a lot of work ahead and a lot of very expensive price tags coming up. Ken, we'll check in again in a little while to see how we're doing, but I appreciate this. And I will thank you publicly for your service and for your commitment, not only uh, in this term as mayor, but to the community. You have... The reason you are in this seat now is because of that commitment. We thank you for that, and we thank you for caring about that and taking the time to do this. Well, I'd like to thank you know my council, my civic administration, and the cooperation that I'm getting from our provincial and federal reps. Uh, we're uh, we're united, and and the city should take great consolation in that. It is a yeah, that is a proud thing for sure that we all work together. That's the roundup for this week, Danny. We'll uh, see what happens next week. Stay tuned.